What's up, YouTube? We're going to break down all the Team Affinity cards today. So we're just going to go through each division. It is Team Affinity Chapter 2. I'll go through some of the other cards as well. Uh, so we'll just get started here and show you what we got. All right, Team Affinity. Um, a little different towards the progress this time. Instead of doing three different conquest maps, it is going to be one big map and it is going to be 15 teams. That's a lot. All right, 15 teams is a lot for one conquest map. Sorry, let me change that and you can see there you know it's a big map it's daunting if you've played extreme conquest maps before it looks similar to that so you're going to play all those teams you can play at least 15 cpu game teams to get this done uh cpu games and you're gonna i think you're gonna want to do it i i don't know if you're gonna want to do it right away it's a lot but let's go through the program um you know, I'm still catching up on season one. I had some stuff going on. I was making a lot of cards. And if you bought a card from my Etsy shop, I really appreciate that. That has been taking up most of my time. So the videos haven't been uh, coming in at a constant rate, but we're back here now. Let's just check out the cards we got so far in a quick glance. And I've seen some of these cards already, and I do like a lot of them. So starting with the NL East, you've seen some of these cards. Uh, Ed Matthews, if you've played the game for the last, I don't know, four or five years, you've seen this exact same card art, probably with the same exact rating too. I'm pretty sure he always gets a 93 overall baseline, you know, beginning of the year type card, and it always has this card art. A lot of times it is the breakout series. I don't know what it is, but it's a very solid and sturdy, just steady card we've had for a while. You can't go wrong with Ed Matthews, I think. He's got a great swing. He's a left-handed hitter, but he hits lefties well. Stands up tall, but it really doesn't it doesn't throw you off. It's it's like a Ken Griffey standing up tall. Like you feel confident about him in the box. I like him. Uh, like I said, you can't go wrong with him, I don't think. So yeah, the 96 clutch is good. He has quirks too. He's got a lot of quirks. A lot of these Team Affinity cards don't have quirks early on in the year. Uh, they're low overall cards, so it's rare that they get quirks. The fact that Ed Matthews has this many quirks tells me two things. One... Uh, it's going to be one of the better TA cards um, just by the name and the rating. And we've used this card before. We're familiar with it and because he's got all these quirks. Two, uh, the quirks will probably tell you that he'll get a better card later in the year. And he will probably get one or two more quirks onto it. But we've noticed sort of a trend over the years. Players with a lot of quirks early on in the year usually get a nice 99 at the end of the year. Or somewhere in the middle of the year, I should say. I don't want to scare you by saying the end of the year. Thinking you got to wait that long. I don't really know. Noble Meyer. If you used the Prospect Noble Meyer last year, you might have liked him. Maybe you didn't. I thought he wasn't bad for a 97 overall. Here we got a 93 90 Noble Meyer. Five pitch mix, fastball slider, circle change, sinker, curveball. You got stuff breaking away, stuff breaking towards you. So it's a good pitch mix. All right. 95 Velo. No quirks, I believe. Per nines are okay. 82 walks per nine and 77 uh, control. And I'm going to compare them and jump right over to Mick Abel who's very similar because he has the same exact pitch mix, uh, pitch mix with fastball slider curve, change up sinker. The walks per nine is lower. The controls, I think, a tiny bit lower, but the K per nine and hits per nine are higher. All right, so the per nines are a little bit better in some areas, worse in some areas. Velo, I actually thought his velocity would be a little bit higher, but we're going to check out another Phillies pipeline card in the events right after this, and I'll show you that card as well. All right, we got Baby Acuna. So, his little brother is the Mets shortstop pipeline series card. Pretty good. Um, really good fielding and speed. You know, with shortstop in this shortstops, specifically in this game, we usually get a lot of good ones throughout the year. I would try using him out earlier than later. Uh, you might have more fun that way in case you get a better card, or if you don't have live series like Corey Seager yet. You know, uh, I don't know if I would re replace Seager with him yet, but I, I like him. He's played second and center field secondary. Uh, not a lot of pop, but the eggs of a lot of cities this year. You don't have to worry too much about power. And I'm going to show you later with some other cards you shouldn't worry about power with either. All right. I mean, you know, most of you have used Joe Maurer. And you see that his power isn't really um, a huge factor. You know, he's got a great swing. So if you square it up with him, you'll still hit some home runs. Anyway, Joey Meneses. Or is it Meneses? I say Meneses. And I hear the announcer say Meneses. So... Joey Meneses is good contact. Um, I don't know how you feel about his swing if you used him last year. He's got situational hitter and breaking ball hitter and a uh, decent pop, pretty balanced. Um, I would only keep him at first base, but he can play third and left. I would just keep him at first or DH if you really want to use him. My first choice would either be one of these two pitchers or Ed Matthews, but I'm really hearing good things about uh, Acuna 
so far. And I'm kind of late to the game with this content anyway. Um, and then while we're here in the division, we'll go over a couple of the missions and stuff. It's going to be the same as every other, you know, conquest. You still get the team missions. So you want to get the guys from the boss packs and put them on your team. So you get the boss missions as well down here. Um, and then you get NL East bosses, uh, different, different difficulties, all-star legend hall of fame. If you want to do that, exchanges is not a bad idea. You get the vouchers from just playing the game. So make sure you hop on and play. So you get some vouchers. And then the Extreme Showdown, I'll go over after this. But let's go through the divisions again. That is AL or NL East. The NL Central is going to have some, uh, what do we got? Josh Bell action. This would probably be my first choice for anyone who's curious about what card to take in this pack. But if you're familiar with these other guys and you like them, go ahead and choose someone like Joe Torre first. I might actually go with Joe Torre first. He's got catcher, secondary. All right, really good contact and his swing is so good he has a closed stance but it's not too over the plate like alan trammell or some other guys but i really have always liked joe tory and he will surprise you if you haven't used him i would try him out for a couple games i really like him 81 pops not bad for joe tory either for a 93 overall card i think this card's gonna play really really well all right if you want to put him a catcher because you don't have spots for him on your team it's not a bad option i mean he's got 60 or 76 fielding 80 arm i don't know what his block rating is uh, but i really like that card and like i said josh bell for anyone who doesn't know who to pick in this pack is this is probably your best choice at either dh or first base uh greg vaughn he got a really good card last year to begin the game and then i didn't see anybody use that card i didn't see anybody use his 97 overall later in the year probably because we only had 99s we had all 99s to work with but i think something about his swing wasn't good I don't know what it was, but nobody used him. His card looked good. His card looks really good here. He's going to get the Buxton boost. So he gets even more power on top of the 112 and 102 pop. I don't know. I think he might be one of the most powerful hitters in the game with the Buxton boost. But I don't know what his swing is going to be like. I, I think he's worth trying out. So I don't know. Someone, someone come back in and tell me how Greg Vaughn plays. And uh, I'll give you, we can give you a better analysis on that. Rob Dibble, we always get a Rob Dibble card. He's got the outlier fastball, but only three pitches. So, you know, sinker, or sorry, fastball, slider, cutter. And like I said, outlier on the fastball, 99 velo. You know Rob Dibble by now. Most people can figure him out on the mound. He's got a funky delivery, kind of. He's a tall pitcher, late release point. Michael Bush, eh, you know, first base, third base, second, left field. Fielding's not impressive at all. Speed's not good. I wouldn't put him in the outfield. He's a lefty who's got pretty good pop against righties. Not bad, not bad. But I would probably go with, like I said, Josh Bell or Joe Torre first out of that pack. And then NL West, we're going to have uh, Drew Jones, who is going to be probably one of the best center fielders in this game right now. And we should get some more along the way. But 96 fielding with 97 speed and 93 reaction is going to play exquisitely among compared to the rest of the fielders we have in the game fielding's been tough this year i'll admit man like whether it's battle royale ranked anything fielding has been tough this year with these lower level cards you know we only have we've only seen a couple of 99s and most people don't have them willie mays is probably the only 99 outfielder we have right now so we're gonna to deal with the fielding for a while and this is one of the better ones drew jones has a tall strike zone he has no quirks and his Hitting it, uh, you know, attributes aren't, it's not going to blow you away, but they're not bad. And he's got speed. So we'll, we'll see. Chase Dollander, he's got a five pitch mix, fastball slider curve, change up sinker. We've seen that before and we like it. Per nine's looking pretty, pretty decent. 88 hits per nine's not good, but K per nine 101 is good. I don't know. Maybe hold off on that one and definitely hold off on, I would say hold off on Kenley Jansen. I know it's Kenley. Kenley, it's, people always find a way to be good with Kenley, uh, but this one, is like the first one that does not impress me uh, in the slightest. His pitch mix is two seam fastball, slider, cutter. If you're going to have fastball, slider, cutter, you would want that fastball to be a four seam fastball. If you're sitting at the plate and you know his only fastball is a two seam, I, I think it's really easy to pick up on. It's not going to catch you off guard knowing that there's not a four seam that he's also throwing with it only two miles per hour difference it's not really a great pitch mix all right he's got good clutch and per nines are pretty good too but i would just save that one for last uh the will myers cycle card i've always thought cycle cards should be better from what i've seen over the years don't you guys think a cycle card would have better either better speed or better power 
you know, you're hitting a home run, triple, double, single. Uh, every time we get a cycle card, I just feel like it's either good power with no speed or good speed with no power. They never seem to get it right, in my opinion, but it's a 93 overall card. Will Myers is fun. He's been around the league, played for a lot of teams. So this is a Padres milestone card. He's going to play first, second, left, center, and right field with like not so great fielding, but he's got 78 speed. So I don't know. I just think cycle cards should be a little bit better than this. Either way, it's a fun card. Do you like Chili Davis? Then if you do, this card will play fine. If you tried him out last year, you didn't like him, maybe hold off on him on this card for a little bit. I like it. The power against lefties not being higher than 54 is kind of weird. I thought he was a power guy based on what we got last year. Clutch at 125 is awesome. So that'll make up for some of the contact against lefties. And let's see, Vision, 87, so he doesn't get any boost from Buxton. Fielding's not great. So 70 speeds faster than what we got last year. They definitely changed some things with his uh, attributes here this year. A ton of quirks, though. So a ton of quirks will definitely help. I'm curious to see how that plays. Uh, someone let me know. Heaston Kierstad, pipeline for the Orioles. Is it Heaston or Heston? I believe it's Heaston. He's going to have balanced contact and power. Actually, his power is, I guess, slightly above average considering the other cards we have right now. He's got 83 fielding. He's going to play right field and left field. Bats left, throws right. 69 speed. Pretty average card. Uh, Orioles have a ton of prospects and they chose him. So, you know, you got the other prospect cards coming up in other areas like Jackson Holiday, you know, and Adley Rutschman's already in the league now. So, Gunnar Henderson, he's already in. You're seeing them get other cards. So, that, I think that's why they went with him. Rafaela for the Red Sox, you have him playing every position except for first base, you know, and catcher and, and pitcher. Not impressive hitting stats, you know, a little low on the power. Even the contact's pretty low, but 92 clutch makes up for it a little bit. Really good fielding, though. Good speed. He can steal some bags with 87 rating on the stealing and 99 base running aggressiveness, which does actually make a difference for stealing. All right. Uh, to me, uh, this I just see a good fielder. That's all I see there. Jason Dominguez. We've had a couple of Jason Dominguez cards in the form of prospect cards or future stars cards. I like him. A lot of people like him. They've used him. I've seen people use his 96 overall cards from either two years ago or last year throughout like the entire year. And they really like that card. Uh, no quirks. Balanced hitter, switch hitter. Another switch hitter we got. Contact's lower than I would like. 88 clutch is okay. He's got power. He's got decent fielding and decent speed and running ability. Like I said, if the contact was better, I, I think I'd probably choose him first regardless now that I'm seeing these other cards. Uh, but let's take a look at these last two guys. Isaac, or Xavier Isaac, he has 104 and 90 power. That's good. And 88 clutch, 64 vision. I believe that makes the Buxton boost, right? Not bad. I would say he's better than the first two guys. Orlvis, is it Orlvis Martinez? Say so he plays second and shortstop se uh, secondary positions, third base. 78 fielding. I would keep him at third. That's probably where he'll be best. Six, 76 contact against righties. Not great. 98 against lefties. A-okay. All right, so he's a lefty killer. All right, AL Central. Stephen Kwan. So this is where I was talking about earlier with the power. I wouldn't worry about Joe Maurer. Uh, or sorry, you know, Stephen Kwan's power, similar to Joe Maurer and similar to some of the other cards we looked at with low power. But if they got a good swing, good stance, good contact and a vision, You'll still hit some home runs with the way exit velocities are working this year. I really like the Stephen Kwan card as a first or second choice in this pack. Okay. He's always got good fielding. It's a gold glove card, so it should have good fielding anyway. Um, 90, let's look at something else. 99 vision, 115 clutch. That's, you know, better than both his contact ratings. And two quirks, bad ball hitter and unfazed, which is pretty good quirks if you're going to only have two. 61 and 57 pop, it's not, it's not going to matter that much. So I actually really like that card. Noah Schultz, four-seam fastball slider, circle change sinker, and a slurve instead of a curve. So similar to those other pitches we looked at, but he's also a lefty, which we don't have a lot of in this game right now. I don't know how many people have Randy Johnson. I personally don't, just because of lack of playing the game. But, you know, there's not a ton of lefty starters. This is a good option to mix that up. Verlander is another Verlander card. So four-seam fastball, slider, 12-6 curve, change-up cutter. 
Uh, it's not going to blow you away, but if you like Verlander, you know, here he is. I, I typically think he's one of those guys people usually like figure out, um, you know, by the third or fourth inning. Not super impressive, but I, I would probably save him for one of the last picks in this pack, even though he looks pretty balanced. Like I said, it's just something about Verlander. I think he's easy to pick up on eventually. Alex Gordon, lefty. I think he's got a pretty smooth swing. He's going to play the field well with 85 fielding and 67 speed. I take that back. 67 speed is typically not good for the outfield. I've noticed you got to have at least like 75 to make up for any fielding ratings that you have to play the outfield actually somewhat well, especially some of these big parks like Laughing Mountain, you know, where you got the outfield gaps like just a mile long. You don't want to give up triples with him, so I wouldn't put him in the outfield, but you got third base as a secondary or, you know, DH. Emmanuel Rodriguez for the Pipeline Twins. Uh, again, good fielding. This one has 82 speed in the outfield for center field, so that'll that'll play definitely better than uh, Alex Gordon. I think I'm going with uh, Quan or Schultz first, though. All right, last but not least, the AL West. We're going to have J.R. Richard. To me, J.R. Richard has always been kind of sneaky good for a little bit of time, you know, for like a week or two, a couple of weeks maybe. Uh, don't let his pitch mix scare you away. That's usually what does it for people is having the two-seam, four-seam, and then only a cutter and slider. You know, people say if you had a sinker, he'd be amazing, but like, I still think he's pretty good for a little bit. I would try him out if you haven't used him yet. Um, he'll get you by. I think he'll get you some innings. He's got outlier on the fastball which is his second pitch in the mix. Slider is his first pitch, and 91 mile per hour slider sneaks up on you. All right, you can jam a lot of guys with that. Hits per nine is great at 110. His home run per nine is 97, which is also great. His K per nine is 82. Average and 68 walks per nine, not great with 76 control. But like I said, I think he is kind of sneaky good for a little bit. Uh, Tim Salmon, never really liked Tim Salmon's swing. I don't know what it is. I just don't hit well with him. Don't let that deter you. I know he always gets a good card. It seems like every year since he's been introduced back into the game as a legend. I've seen good cards with him, you know, uh, stats wise, but 56 speed in the outfield is not great. So I would think maybe DH for him. Jacob Wilson. Right handed shortstop with 105 contact on both sides and 108 clutch. So that's good. 60 and 70 pop. Not great. But like I said, you know, don't worry about power too much right now. And then pretty good fielding with 84 fielding, 88 arm, 90 accuracy, 85 reaction, 75 speed at shortstop. This all pretty plays pretty well. I kind of like this card too. Vogelbach, Daniel Vogelbach. He's going to be a ready killer. Uh, that's that's about it. All right, clutch is only 75. Man, that's, that's tough against lefties. 56 contact, 91 power is not bad. If you like his swing, maybe consider it. I would save him for last though. All right, and then last card, we got Mitch Garver. This card's great. I mean, Mitch Garver is always... I wouldn't even say sneaky good at this point. I think he's pretty good. Um, every Mitch Carver card I've seen has been decent. Whether the stats aren't great, he, he plays well, but this one looks like it has pretty good attributes or attributes, however you say it. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. But 98 contact, 89 contact, 105 pop, 112 pop, 62 vision, which be I believe he still gets the bucks and boost with that. So that makes this card even more powerful. And then 94 clutch. If his, The only thing that can make this card better is if that his clutch was even higher than that, or his block rating on the fielding stats was better than 68 because he is a catcher. We don't have a ton of great catchers right now, so this is a really good option. I would probably go with Mitch Garver first. So that's Team Affinity. I showed you how to get done the Conquest uh, or the other missions. It's a lot of Conquest games and then missions, but you obviously get XP by using those cards in Battle Royale online modes. I would try that. If you're not usually an online player, it might be time to consider it. So those online players are getting a lot of XP towards these programs more so than other years. All right, if we're looking at the events in the multiplayer section, the 20 win reward is going to get you Andrew Painter. And uh, let's break him down real quick. Five pitch mix. I like the 12 six curveball and the disparity in the velocity with that. The 99 velocity dropped to 79 miles per hour on the curveball. Uh, per nines are pretty balanced. I wish he had a little bit higher home runs per nine. And everything else looks pretty good. No outlier, but he is 99 velo. And uh, he's a tall pitcher. Let's see how it plays. He's going for about 90,000 stubs in the market if you get him, I would say, today. Otherwise, he's going to keep dropping down in price. I want to try him out and debut him. If I don't like him or I don't have a good feeling about him, we can just sell him and not lock him in. 10 wins get you Barry Larkin. I really don't like this card. It's not impressive. 
typically there's always better shortstops in the game and Barry Larkin, unless he has a really good card, is not typically a card I like to use. Uh, but he has gotten good cards before and this is not one of them. But it's a collection card. You can lock him in or sell him for, you know, 10,000 stubs or so. And then you get these two packs to lock into your collection. You know, one of the guys from the previous events and yeah. Battle Royale, I'm not going to go over these cards, but they did take out the silver program cards. So you don't have to use silvers to get done the XP path. It's just golds and diamonds now. And there are a lot of diamonds in this. So you might not get all of them in the same draft, but you can use them throughout the uh, the game mode. And then you got Ryan Braun and Fernando Valenzuela. I'm probably not going with Valenzuela just because he doesn't play well in lower difficulties. If you get to Legend... You know, I would probably only be able to use him a couple of times. I don't really play too many games on Legend if I get the chance, but I would go with Ryan Braun. And uh, either way, this isn't my favorite BR pack that I've seen. So hopefully we get a better one next time. Ranked is going to be a toss-up for me. I really don't know who to choose. If we get, uh, you know, hopefully we get both. We get the World Series, which I'll be pushing for. Jacob deGrom and Mike Cameron, who's going to be one of the better center fielders in the game. The thing with this is... DeGrom will probably last a little bit longer for your team. Being a 97 overall pitcher with good... It's it's Jacob DeGrom. I don't really have to go over too much here, but he's got the outlier on the fastball. They gave him a sinker last year, and they kept that for this year instead of a two-seam fastball, so his mix is a little bit better. Uh, tall pitcher, you know, per nines look really balanced here. Everything looks great. Mike Cameron, he's, he's going to be one of the best center fielders in the game, though. So he's got the speed. He's got the fielding. I, I came around with him last year with this all-star card and that swing, so I like it a lot, and he's got the quirks. He's got six quirks, and they're good ones. I don't know. I'll, I'll see what uh, happens when we come to this point, uh, see what pitchers we got. I think DeGrom's probably the right choice for most people, but if you like Cameron, you like a good center fielder, then there he is. You know, I don't think you can go wrong with either of those, so that is a good pack that they dropped for us. Thank you, SDS. All right. And then, um, you know, the other things you can do are the moments and the showdown. We have the extreme showdown and then the team affinity chapter two showdown. Uh, I don't know how long this one is going to be. Oh, team affinity is really short. So you can knock that out pretty quickly. Xfinity or <laughs> Xfinity extreme <laughs> affinity is Rob Dibble. All right. I, I don't know anything about this yet. I'm going to make a new video on it. And we'll knock that out of the way and try to get that done. All right, but let me know what you guys think of these cards, the Team Affinity cards and the pack. I'm not going to go over the pack cards. You can take a look at them yourselves, but let me know about the ranked Battle Royale and events cards as well in the comments. Drop down below who you're going to put on your team and who is sneaky good. I want to know what cards I haven't used it that are going to play well. All right, so thanks for watching.